Welcome to God's Word on Air with Nelia Guterai. We are so glad you could join us. Every message is designed to build your faith, line upon line, and precept upon precept. And now, let's continue last week's message. Glorious morning to you all out there. This is God's Word on Air with Nelly Egute, right? I just want to say thank you and I celebrate every one of you. It's another great day to just share the Word of God with you. And I want to say thank you to every one of you who have always consistently taken out time to just be with me on this program. I want to say God bless you and your labor of love will not be forgotten. It shall be rewarded abundantly in the name of Jesus. I want to pick up from where I stopped last week. And last week we talked about the effort experience and it was also laid in my heart to just continue this. I don't know how long the, 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 the Lord will take us. But yesterday when I was in church, I just heard another version of the effort experience. And I'm going to share that next week, hopefully. But what the Lord laid in my heart for this week it is a season of waiting on God. The effort experience is also the season of waiting on God. And the scripture he gave me was Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31. And before I continue, let's just quickly have a short prayer. Praise the Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you once more. Awesome God. Thank you because this is still 2022 20, January. We are saying thank you because you allowed us to cross into this year gloriously. We give you praise, we exalt your name, we magnify you. Lord, we ask, oh Lord, that in this season and in this year, Father, let your heavens be open over us in the name of Jesus. Every awesome thing, every glorious thing that you have planned for every one of us, Father, let there be a manifestation speedily in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Um, and my text for today is Isaiah 40, 31. Popular verse that we all know. The Bible says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. And like I said earlier, this season, the effort experience is the season of waiting praise the lord is a season of waiting so this is part two of our last week's message and for those of us who didn't follow uh, but it's just hooking up with us today i want to explain what an effort is an effort actually i call it aka the garment of prayer is a linen apron worn in ancient hebrew rites it is a sacred clothing worn by the high priest at the command of god and it is usually worn during holy ceremonies. God gave Moses this, this specification on how the ephod should be designed to invoke God's presence. You see that divine presence. You see that in Exodus 28, 6 to 8, and also Exodus 39, 2 to 5. Praise the Lord. But I also want us to know that even though it was a special garment as at that dispensation, today we don't need any specific special garments. Um, Jesus is our cloak of righteousness to assess our Heavenly Father. That's why I said in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comment unto the Father but by me. Praise the Lord. But the if the experience, like I, I mentioned earlier, is actually the season of waiting. Like our scripture just explains to us. He said, when we wait on God, what happens? He shall renew our strength. We shall mount up with wings as eagles. We shall run and not be weary, and we shall walk and not faint. I'm sure that is what we want in this year, 2022. I told us before, last um, in my early message for this year, the Lord told me last year, He said, This year is a year of speed. Praise the Lord. Supernatural speed. I think I shared that in my first message for 2022. A year of supernatural speed. And so, everything you and I will have ask God for everything we have been trusting him for. It might look as if we have been waiting forever but this year God will bring them speedily. It will be accomplished. It will come to pass speedily. Praise the Lord. And so our scripture just tells us when we wait 
we need to wait that's just the truth of the matter we need to wait because even in our the scripture i shared my first message in january first kings 18 42 to 44 we saw a typical and a classic example of elijah waiting on god even after he gave the prophecy that there shall be abundance of rain praise the lord bible tells us he did not just say it and walk away immediately he told ahab that even though ahab went up and began to eat and drink elijah the bible says he put his face between his knees and he began to pray praise the lord i told us that the effort experience is the season of prayer in part one is a season of prayer and when we finish praying when we pray what's next because at times you pray and it looks as if nothing is happening it looks as if you just wasted your time hallelujah but the truth is that elijah had to keep praying and even when he told the servant go and look that prophecy i have just declared by the leading of the holy spirit i have just declared is there any manifestation and he, the servant went out and said no let me read it here he said so i have went up to eat and drink and to drink and elijah went up to the top of camel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look towards the sea and he went up and looked and said there's nothing and he said go again several times that struck a chord in me praise the lord because at times that you pray and it looks as if nothing is happening well let just say keep going keep going as long as god has spoken it he will surely bring it to pass hallelujah so when you enter that season of prayer just like um, um david did in first samuel 30 he he, he prayed he said to the abiata bring me the, the effort bring me my garment of prayer i need to see god's face and immediately he did that the bible says god told him look pursue overtake you surely overtake and you will cover all hallelujah for david it was almost an instant thing but of course we know that it's not as if the day god said it it was that same day of course he had to pursue so that season of pursuing that those days he had to pursue until he met an egyptian on the way and he was able to get information he, he needed that was the season of waiting and so that was what elijah was also telling the servant keep going until as long as god has spoken it it will come to pass it doesn't matter how long it will take i assure you it will come to pass and in verse 44 the bible tells us and it came to pass at the seventh time hallelujah that he said behold there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up say unto ahab prepare that chariot and get it down and the rain so that the rain stop thee not praise the lord the rain must surely fall god must surely answer it doesn't matter our patriarchs have taught us that jacob waited he said though the answer to our fervent and believing prayer does not come quickly we must continue in earnest prayer and wait and wait don't give up there's no alternative from my own experience i've realized that there's no alternative except you are not a child of god except you you don't trust him because the bible says though they, they that wait upon you know that season of waiting is also a season of trusting because you are confident that somehow somehow god will work it out or or he's already working it out and there's a season where there will be a quick manifestation Praise the Lord. That is the city we have entered. Hallelujah. So don't feel, oh, God is not going to do it. Look at Jacob. Jacob had to wait. Hallelujah. We saw that in Genesis, or we see that in Genesis 32 24. The Bible tells us, and Jacob was left alone. We know the story. When he was going back to be united to his family, of course, he was, he was afraid that Esau was going to kill him. And at a point, he did everything possible. He tried to use his human wisdom. He tried to use his own his own intelligence to try to bribe um, Esau. But it didn't work. And so what did he do? The Bible says he took his family and sent them across. And told everybody, leave me. And he had to wait. He waited until... in The, pl the place of waiting is a place of prayer. 
let me correct that quickly. It's not as if you are sitting down and just folding your arms. Look at what Eli- Elijah did. He put his feet between his his face between his legs, his, his feet, his legs rather, and prayed. And so Jacob sent everyone away and prayed. He prevailed. He prayed until he prevailed. Hallelujah. Until he prevailed. And that was where his name, Genesis 32, 27. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. 28, verse 28 tells us, Thy name shall no, shall no longer be called Jacob or Israel. For, a, for as a prince that has power with God and with man and has prevailed. Praise the Lord. If you want to prevail, you have to enter into that season of waiting. Rachel waited almost 25 years before her Joseph came. Praise the Lord. We see that Genesis 30, 22. Sarah waited almost 90 years. Isaac manifested in Genesis 21, 5 to 7. And when Isaac manifested, what happened? She declared, God has made me laugh. I love that part. He said, God has made me laugh. All those that have been mocking her, all those that have been, you know, you know, mocking her and you know just saying all sorts it is not possible she can never have a child these same people turned around to celebrate with her rachel waited the bible says and god genesis 30 22 he said and god listened to her that was a season of prayer she was not murmuring but she was speaking the word of god trusting him and she prayed her way through almost 25 years had Joseph manifested, and that was a, an awesome son. The 11 sons of Jacob did not compare to Joseph. That's what happens when we wait on God and receive from him. Whatever he gives to us is everlasting. It's not something that man can, can, can how will I put it, uh, man can boast of. No man can give you what God can give you. Praise the Lord. The woman with the issue of blood, for 12 solid years, she waited, but one day her story changed. We see that in Mark 5, 25 to 34. One day, the Bible says she has spent all that she has for, you know, to physicians. And I also want to add to even herbalists and all sorts. Because, you know, when that's the, you have such kind of problem, everything will come. People will come from left, right, and center with all manner of solution. But one day, she encountered Jesus. Blood Bartimaeus waited. Praise the Lord. Mark 10, 46 to 52. He waited, but one day, one day, that blindness, the Bible says Jesus was on his way to Jericho, and he was sitting at the gate of Jericho, and what happened? He encountered Christ, and that blindness was healed. Another interesting one is the crippled man for 38 years. That one is so, when I, when I, when I, when I read these stories, I'm like, wow, 38 solid years, but one day, the troubler of the water stood before him and said, what, what do you want? Praise the Lord. And he began to tell him long, long story. And he said, pick up your bed and walk. And the end, that was the end of the, 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 the suffering. Why do you have to wait? Psalm 30, 11 to 12 gives us the answer. He said, thou has turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou has put off my sackcloth and gathered me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Hallelujah. That is why we have to wait. So that every garment of shame and reproach will be turned into a garment of celebration. Every garment of shame and reproach will be taken away. And the garment of honor, garment of beauty will be put upon us. And our joy will be full. Praise the Lord. And we close with this verse. Proverbs 24, 10. And it says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. That's one scripture that I hold. When I face certain challenges and I'm about to give up, I say, no, my strength is not strong, small. My strength is mighty. It is big. Praise the Lord. So I want to beg you in this season of uh, the effort experience, as I said, in this season of 2022, is a season of prayer. It's a season of waiting upon the Lord. And when you do that, the Lord shall surely meet you at your point of need in the name of Jesus. For those of us out there that have not given our lives to Christ, this is a season where you need to run to him and just say, Father, have mercy upon me. Restore me back. 
and bring you into the sheepfold. I want you to say that prayer and I want also to, to assure you that as you say that prayer, heaven, heaven is rejoicing with you. You say that prayer of, of, of repentance and ask for mercy. And please, I beg you, go to the nearest Bible church as led by the Holy Spirit and just tell them that you've just given your life to Christ. And I'm, I'm truly, truly sure that they'll take it all from there and help you to grow in faith. God bless you as we meet again, same time next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to today's message. For more information, prayer requests, or to share your testimonies, send us an email at godswordonair at gmail.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or listen to us on MixLR, all at God's Word on Air with Nelly Egutera. Till we meet again, same time next week, keep building your faith on God's Word.